I came across this video from uh, Joe Rogan where he was showing his absolute bedazzlement and surprise at HG Wells and some of the predictions that HG Wells made. So let's take a look at the clip and come back and make a comment on this. Born 150 years ago. Phones, email, and television. What? Is that real? In this alternate reality, people communicate exclusively with wireless systems that employ a kind of co-mingling of voicemail and email-like properties. Holy People do not talk together on the telephone, he writes. A message is sent to the station of the district in which the recipient is known to be, and there it waits until he chooses to tap his accumulated messages. Whoa. Then he talks back to the senders and dispatches any other messages he wishes. The transmission is wireless. How? <laughs> How? The, what? I'd like to know if he did <laughs> drugs back then. Which citizens used wondrous forms of technology like the audiobook, airplane, and television. What in the f***, man? Mm. Now, as you guys saw there, I mean, Joe Rogan was an absolute shock about this man who was talking about these new technologies that were going to, 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 to happen in the future. Now, bear in mind, H.G. Wells didn't exist three, 400 years ago, 500 years ago, 600 years ago. H.G. Wells died in 1946. And he saw the invention of the aeroplane and the television and the, all of those things. So all of those predictions were very, like, it didn't take too much of a speculation. Now listen to this. If you find those predictions from a man who died practically yesterday in historical terms, and obviously I mean this exaggeratedly, because there's going to be, oh, this person doesn't know what yesterday... People, please, understand the language. Then how would you react to a man 1,400 years ago named Muhammad, who is the Prophet Muhammad, who in fact predicted where Islam would spread exactly? The hadith says, Zuya li al ard, faraaytu mashariqaha wa magharibaha, wa inna ummati sayablughu mulkuha ma zuya li minha. That the earth has been projected from me. And that I saw its east and left, uh, sorry, its east and west sides. And that my nation, i.e. the nation of Muslims, will inhabit those areas, what was projected on there for me. And he goes more specific, telling us where Islam will spread. And in authentic narrations, telling us where Islam would go. Even Satakhzun al-Hind, you're going to go into India. And obviously we have a very healthy population of India, Indian, Muslims. A Sindh, which actually is part of Pakistan now. Egypt. Misra. He said, Allahumma barik lana fi Yemenina. Our Yemen. So in other words, the Muslims would inhabit Yemen. Washamina, which is the, the Levant region. The Levant. And all of these different places. And there's more. I'm just giving you a little bit of a taster. You may say, well, this is all kind of ancient history anyways. But the Prophet Muhammad predicted that there will be barefooted Arabs. Barefooted Arabs competing for the highest buildings. Compare that with the H.G. Wells things that you are reading, with all due respect. Now the tallest building in the world is Burj Khalifa in the UAE. Compare that with the H.G. Wells things that you are you are citing that the Prophet Muhammad وسلم, told us that interest would be everywhere, that we wouldn't be able to avoid its dust. And now we have capitalistic systems of economy, supply-side economics, which means that virtually governments have to set interest rates. The Prophet told us, the Prophet told us that there would be a spread of sexually transmitted diseases. As a result of lewd practices people would do. And such sexually transmitted diseases would not have appeared in the past. In other words, there would be new sexually transmitted diseases. There is even a hadith in Sahih Muslim. Where the Prophet said, there will come a time where you will be gliding on the earth with suruj. Which basically is like an old Roman ship. And these old Roman ship had wheels, by the way. And it's on the earth that you'd be gliding. Reclining on leather chairs. Listen to what it's saying. 
reclining on leather chairs? You'll be gliding on the earth, reclining on leather chairs. Such that when you open the door, women will come out, Muslim women, to the mosques. That's how they'll be going to mosques. And they'll have certain hairstyles, which is like the hump of a camel. Very specific. And many modern day scholars say this is talking about, obviously, cars. Extremely specific stuff. Now, if you're very amazed about H.G. Wells, H.G. Wells, who died in 1945, talking about certain technologies. Talking about certain technologies. And I've just given you, by the way, a taster. There's more than this. Count six things before the day of judgment. The Prophet said this. Moti, my death. After that, the conquest of Jerusalem. The Jerusalem was the crown jewel of the Roman Empire and the Prophet Muhammad predicted that it would be conquered by the Muslims and it was by Umar ibn Khattab and his time which was only some five years some, some five years after the death of the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam maybe a little bit more How can he know all of these things? How can you successfully predict the future so precisely, so sophisticatedly and so meticulously in this way. Now, if you are impressed with H.G. Wells, and you think there's a little bit of question mark there, how did he know this information? Although he died in the mid-40s, my question to you, Joe Rogan, my question to you is, what do you make of all of those predictions? And quite frankly, even if you try and shrug it off, we don't need your validation. The answer is already clear. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.